Okay, um, so I've tried to make this video a few times. The problem is when I go long on tech, I end up coming up short on gameplay. And so I'm going to actually very quickly touch on, very quickly touch on uh, some of the changes to Brea um, and, and why, and then just move right into gameplay. And then if you want to continue the discussion, please just join me in the comments and I will try to address um, your, your thoughts there. But basically... Uh, there are three big decks in the format. Tassiger, um, Baral, or Baby Jace. Um, basically, it's Polymorph, Mono Blue, Tassiger Control, and uh, Mono Green Control, which uh, finishes with Eldrazi. It uses um, a lot of gimmicky lands to uh, take advantage of and Prim Primeval Titan if they can stick it. Um, but uh, it tries to just beat the blue decks because it has lots of things that are uncounterable, ways to make their guys uncounterable, and um, creatures that have come into play abilities that can't be stopped by counter spells, where the abilities is bad or worse than the actual creature themselves. So, um, you know, Eye of Ujin is probably the all-star in that deck. So, with that being said, this deck tries to address those big three. And I, uh, unfortunately, I took... Uh, well, almost two weeks off um, because of work, so I haven't been able to play much. Um, but I am 4-0 at this time with the limited amount of time I have had to play. So things seem to be working out. And the reason that I'm using this version of the what this deck tries to do is none of the big three have much by way of artifact mana. They are um, also semi-lacking. Green has some of it in... Tassigar has some, and Blue has essentially none. Uh, Semi-lacking in artifact removal, which means they're weak to Winter Orb if you can time it correctly, if you can put, get it on the table. But in addition to that, they're all very reliant on getting quite a bit of mana into play. So um, this deck actually runs Parallax Tide as a combo card, and it has tons of ways to combo with Parallax Tide. I'm going to hit those really fast, and then we'll go into gameplay. So one way you can combo with Parallax Tide is, is there's two ways you can combo with it. One is you can let it die and then stifle the effect that says to return the lands to play. And by stifle, I mean anything that functions like a stifle. So stifle, trick bind, disallow, they're all in here. They can stop Parallax Tide from returning lands. The second way to do it is you, you get uh, Tide on the table, you hold down control, and you exile five lands... Um, while you're holding control so that the effect ha doesn't resolve. So you, you put the triggers on the stack, and then while the triggers are on the stack, you somehow find a way to move, remove Parallax Tide from the board. And if that happens, Tide will attempt to return lands that haven't been exiled, which means it does nothing. At that point, the trigger um, that says to return lands is now dealt with, and in reverse order, you will now exile five lands forever. So um, there are many ways you can do that. For example, you can play Tide, Untap, Upkeep uh, before fading happens. With fading on the stack, you activate it five times, one, two, three, four, five, and then you cryptic it back to your hand, setting you up for another five lands down the road. That's one way you can do it. Another way is you can play... Um, so this deck wants to play Red Blast because um, blue is the color and green is right up next to it. So it really wants to play Red Blast, but the problem is you don't want to have Red Blast against Mono Green because they're useless. Parallax Tide's one way we fix that. So you Tide with uh, five mana, um, either fi either five mana in play or four mana in play and a Blast in hand. If it's five mana in play, you just activate it five times and then Blast it in response, and uh, you got it. If it's, f if it's four mana in play, you cast the Tide and you do nothing, and then you untap. And during your upkeep, you activate Tide in response to fading, and then you blow it away with a Pyroblast. So that's one of the ways you can use Pyroblast or Red Blast against a green deck for effect. The second way is that we run Gilded Drake now. Gilded Drake will um, makes Red Blast and Pyroblast useful against green decks. Um, it also is one of the only ways you can steal an Emrakul, which means it's good against blue decks. So it's actually an answer to blue that allows us to improve our answers to blue, which is also good against green, which allows us to turn our, our 
anti-blue cards into anti-green cards in conjunction with some of the other cards in our deck. Of course, you can throw away the Pyro and Red Blast to like Dak Faden or you know brainstorm them off if, if that's your plan. Now, another way you can Tide is you can get Seal of Cleansing down, for example. Cast Tide, activate it five times, sack the Seal in response. Boom, you got them on turn four. Another way is Disenchant it in response, same as you'd do with the Red Blast. Um, so you're, you're only... And then lastly, you can activate Tide... You can activate it and don't do anything in response. And like I said earlier, during your upkeep, it finally fades away. Let it fade. It has no counters on it. It will die. Let it die. And then on the stack goes a trigger that says return all your opponent's lands to play. And then from there, you stifle trick binder disallow that trigger. And that will prevent their lands from coming back, which means... You can actually play, if you have one of those three cards, you can play Tide and just hit it up immediately, grab some lands. On their turn, they play a land. Oh, I'll take that one too. And then during my upkeep, I'll deal with all that. You can even, say you have five mana, for example, or whatever. Like you could you could play Tide, use it all up, go to your upkeep, put Fading on the stack. There's nothing to Fade. Put the Sacrifice ability on the stack that says Resolve that. And then put the Triggered ability that says Return all your opponent's lands into play. And then... Cast brain, uh, you know, vampiric tutor for a stifle. Brainstorm it into your hand, and then stifle the effect. So there's plenty of ways you can take advantage of this card. So that's kind of the main standouts here. Lastly, I did want to point out that I'm running Sabo's Web. It's very good against the green decks, and every once in a while, it's actually strong against um, Tassiger more than anything else because they typically run Intuition with Cycling Lands, and Cycling is an activated ability, which means Sabo's Web will prevent those lands from untapping ever if they if they do make their way into play. So that's a nice effect there. So let's get to some games. And anything else you might like to know about the deck, you can ask. Um, it is still being developed. But like any good control deck, we need the metagame to develop before we can develop the counterpunch. You, you can't counterpunch until you know how your opponent punches. And now that we've seen the development of the, the metagame for a few weeks and had an opportunity to test various ideas, I think this is the closest thing to being on the right track um, and works very well as you are about to see. So let's go take a look at some games. And I think the way we can do this, I think we actually click on Commander, yeah, and just go to League Games. And hopefully, I didn't test it, but hopefully the replays work. So here I had to mulligan and I'm playing against Serac. So Serac is clearly a way to address um, the format in the sense that um, blue is one of the biggest colors in the format. And of course there's a 6-6. Six, six. It's a gigantic creature against green as well. I'm going to obviously have to try to find a way to keep my opponent off his mana. I was hoping I'd be able to trick mine to land earlier, and then of course I was hoping to condescend, so I, I didn't get to do either of those. But I'm still set up to trick mine here, or condescend, but I can't do it for one. Look at main deck Cho. This person really wants to beat blue decks. So I'm going to enlighten Cho. I could go get Seal here, Seal of Cleansing, but that's a prevent me from losing play. I, I actually kind of like that his Tropical Islands pinched. And then my opponent goes for a Revoker, and I think, ooh, maybe I was too greedy. So I actually Condescend, put both cards on top, and then regret wasting the Condescend. So he shuts off my Felwar Stone, of all things, not my Talisman, so I still have black, which is crazy. Sure wish I had that Condescend in my hand, though. Especially here. And he wrecks Ages, but guess what? Trick Mine will stop that. And I don't care that much about the 2-1. I only really care about the Disenchant effect. It's another one of those fantastic side effects of um, running the uh, Stifle abilities. It, they're also very, very good against all of Green's stupid ETB enter the battlefield um, triggers. All right, so I'm setting myself up nicely here because so I cycled off the um, Prairie because what I can do is um, I can actually use one of my islands if I need to and then deprive it back into my hand. So I'm continuing to set up. I'm trying to play around the fact that he might have blue. I'm fixing my island problem under the choke. I mean that he might have a counter, rather. I'm also keenly aware of the fact that at 5 mana you can cast Serac. And look at that gorgeous top deck. I thought I was going to have to Deluge for 6 here so he couldn't respond with his commander. But when I draw the Red Blast, I'm pumping the fist because I can Deluge for 1. And my opponent seems to be having some mana troubles over there. So let's, let's see if we can improve our board a bit. 
All right, down comes Sirakin. Goodbye. Off he goes. So you want a main deck choke? I got main deck red blast. And look at that. Prowling Serpapard. Can't be countered and other creatures can't be countered. This guy hates blue. Unfortunately, Brea does not care too much about that guy. If I want to play some morph, I'm not going to counter some random morph when I have Brea. I'm going to go ahead and rather just play Sabo's web and decide if I want to eat the artifact or not. I've got some mana floating, but web found a Jace, so no. I use Jace and I bounce his guy, and it turns out it's a Rattleclaw Mystic, so now I can play accordingly. And then my opponent plays Witch Stalker, who will grow whenever I play a blue or black spell on my opponent's turn. This guy is like the most anti-blue player ever. Anyway, my, no big deal. Let's just Yagmos will instead. You can keep it. I'm going to go set myself up with Parallax Tide. And, uh, oops. Uh, I actually decide that instead of... Yep, so I go ahead and play Tide, and you can see I'm, I'm exiling lands and just doing nothing. Exile lands, exile more lands, and then I set myself up with a Rift, so I Rift him. Tide has no counters on it, and now my opponent's going to get all his lands back. Oops, nah, let's not allow that. And with that, my opponent scoops it up. So no nothing for him. I did draw opposition there. Um, like I said, I never got a chance to use it because, I mean, like in this game, for example, the game's already over. So still not sure how I feel about it. I guess we'll see. Um, let's go take a look at some more games. So uh, that was game one. Parallax Tide putting in some work like it's want to do against decks that aren't mono red or white. All right, so game two, I was playing against Nanof. And uh, basically nobody's mono red or white. But if they were, Brea does all right against mono red and white as well. All right, so this guy's playing Tassiger. So we've played, let's see, a oddball, like, anti-format green-blue deck that was trying to do something special. All right, so let's see how good Weathered Wayfarer actually is. Here we are playing against Tassiger, and I have a, a Weathered Wayfarer keep with no islands. At the end of the turn, strip mine in response. I'm going to activate Wayfarer, and I'm going to go get Azorius Chancery. Hit my opponent for one, play the Chancery and pass. I would have preferred to keep my Wayfarer up, but I could not. All right, well, my opponent played another coming to play tap land. I'm going to go ahead and go strip his uh, blue away. And my opponent, Vampiric Tutors, I actually have to discard too many cards in hand. So finally, my opponent plays Tassiger and a Polluted Delta. And look at that rip, Sabo's Web. So the key here is I'm going to have to, I, I need to make sure that I get Tassiger off the table, and I need to make sure that I'm not vulnerable at any time. So I'm trying to work around the fact that he's got a sack land, and I have Disallow in my hand. So I, I don't know why he's not fetching, but um, he actually goes for a Demonic Tutor here, and then I go for Swords. He tries to sack in response. I Disallow that. Swords is Guy. DT resolves, and guess what? Baron Moore cycles. You know what that means? Very soon, Sabo is going to have something to say about that. But I wait just a little bit longer, and look what he got. He got a Wooded Foothills and taps it with Urborg. Holy smokes. Poor guy. So I deprive and activate Weathered Wayfarer. My turn, I get to activate Weathered Wayfarer again. I am going to that well. And look, Sabo's web. Your Wooded Foothills and Cycling Lens don't untap, sir. And Tassiger, the enemy, the bad guy. Um, unfortunately, of course, this wasn't the um, Tassiger deck. I don't know if this guy's copied card for card the number one deck right now, which is Tassiger or not. Um, but uh, always satisfying to beat that commander since it's such a bull oni card. It's such a BS card as a commander. It's ridiculous. But that draw was savage, and we crushed him. Weather Wayfarer Tech getting her done along with Sabo's Web. It's hilariously awesome. Okay, so game three. Um, funny, too, because in the last game, I played Web, and it turned into a Jace, so that was actually super cool. So game three, we've got against CD Sandwich. And I believe he's playing uh, Baral. Yeah. All right. So Baral, I have to mulligan twice before I have a hand that I'm happy with. But this has first turn Inquisition. However, I'm not willing to risk uh, 
not being able to play Stoneforge on turn two. And also, I scried a Crucible on top of my deck. Forgot about that. So, I go turn two Crucible. My opponent could play Baral here, chooses not to, which is kind of interesting. So, I go ahead and just Inquisition him. Let's see why he's not playing it. Whispers Condescend. So, he's holding on Condescend. So, I take that out of his hand, leave him with Whispers of the Muse. The other cards in his hand were... Um, Treachery, Island, Reweave, Tectonic Edge. Reweave's another way that they combo off. All right, so we're going to play a Stoneforge. My opponent whispers in response, does nothing, and I go get Sword of Feast and Famine. So now he's probably thinking about whether or not he wants to play his Baral. I'm going to keep using the... Um, I'd like to get this Dimmer Aqueduct in play, but I'll go ahead and keep using the Crucible while I have it. So I would have liked to have slammed a sword down there, but I feel like, you know what, I am not going to... The sword's going to win the game, so I am just... I'll wait one more turn and take no risks. So then my opponent's turn, I go ahead and Vampiric Tutor and activate Stoneforge and get the sword into play. I tutored for Winter Orb. Of course, I know he has a Dismiss, so I'm trying to work around that. So we'll get him with the um, guy here. And I go ahead and Fetch. Comes into play tapped. Flood, uh, irrigated uh, Farmland. It immediately gets untapped for the sword, and I use it. After combat, to play Brea, who gets dismissed, which is what we wanted. Down comes the orb. And now I've got that other tech play. All right, so I untap Ancient Tomb, Dimmer the um, farmland into my hand, hit my opponent. I don't have a second blue card for force, but I cycle irrigated farmland into Shackles. Well, it's not a blue card, but it isn't bad. And I can hard cast force now, thanks to the um, sword. All right, back to... Um, replaying uh, Lance from the graveyard. So go ahead and brainstorm this, this turn. Get, get an Is It Signet down. Hit my opponent. Sack in response to Sword's ability. Well, with Sword on the stack, untap all my stuff and pass. All right, so now I'm just going to, at some point, I'm just going to replay that Irrigated Farmland. My opponent cruises. I know he's got Treachery, so I just let it go. And then hard cast force of will. I don't want him. I could take my guy back with either Drake or Shackles, but I don't want him on tapping lands. So draw for the turn, cast Brea, play Irrigated Farmland from the graveyard, and untap all my lands. Follow it up with a uh, Shackles and say go. And at this point, my opponent just, is, it's just completely hopeless. He has no mana. And this is how you beat Big Blue if you can. I mean, my opponent has absolutely no mana at all, and I have generating tons of card advantage and tons of board presence. And very soon my opponent's about to die. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Drops him to nine, and then I could actually sack two, four, six, and just kill my opponent. Uh, six artifacts would do it. Would do nine damage, and I have plenty of mana to do that. So he just scoops it up. But uh, anyway, very satisfying. And also, you could see how useful it was to have the uh, white... Um, the Singleton White um, Cycling Land. Very, very nice in that. Very nice in that game. Here's a rough one against Masherock. If we can replay it, and uh, my opponent is playing Selvala, and he gets first turn Gemstone Caverns, exiling Homeward Path. I'm so excited. Who exiles Homeward Path against Brea? That's awesome. All right, so I could go early turn Vampiric Tutor. But I actually don't know what I want to get yet. So I fetch thinking I'm going to play Grim and change my mind at the last minute. And my opponent walks his Savala right into my evasive action for four. That's fantastic. And I, I drew a land there. So I go ahead and just play Grim. Still haven't decided what I'm going to do. Drew a Stifle. So I play Sobble's Web looking for land. My opponent sacks Misty Rainforest. Let's Stifle it. I'll take it. LD my opponent. Absolutely. Opponent fetches Oracle. And then look what he does. He has to... I'm going to pause. So my opponent fetches Oracle of Moldiah to try to continue to progress his development, plays a land, the last land in his hand, which is Strip Mine, and then taps four lands to cast Oracle. Well, I have Sobble's Web out, so my opponent just locked his Strip Mine under the web, and that's certainly going to be relevant this game. All right, so main, turn, main phase I ponder. I still haven't Vampiric tutored yet. Fortunately, my opponent hits a Forest tier off for his Oracle. And then... Eldritch Evolutions, and I was trying to figure out what is he going to get. I thought he might go get Sundering Titan, but he goes and gets Prowling Serpapard. That's fantastic for me. Now I know what I'm going to Vampiric Tutor for. 
my turn toxic deluge let's do it for five and i'm done my opponent takes his turn and he goes for a green sun zenith i can muddle that i would have liked to have kept muddle but um i'd rather have a deprive so uh and then i draw and at the end of my opponent's turn i fetch a factor fiction and in response he quarter callings for one so you can try to get his mana development going so now i've got factor fiction and a deprive i'm good opponent makes a big play of garrick Okay, well, there's a deprived target. I drew and play a lead. And then he goes for Selvala. So I'm going to go ahead and factor fiction in response. I might get a force of will that causes him to do a bad split here. I don't, but I do get a pretty interesting pile. Uh, Bounce land, Vindicate, Tithe, Night's Whisper, or Crucible. I go ahead and take a Vindicate, Tithe, and a Bounce land. I pick up land, so I pick up. Brainstorm into a sweet collection of cards. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I actually drew the Sword of Feast and Famine, so I Stoneforge into Clamp and say go. My opponent plays this Cumulative Upkeep 5-5 that makes my guys grow as the Cumulative Cost. My turn, I go ahead and Tithe and uh, uh, cast and equip Sword of Feast and Famine, immediately untapping all my lands. Cast a Worn Power Stone and um, I don't remember what the last thing was that I did there. Anyway, so my opponent then uses the opportunity to play Hall of Gemstone. Now I actually had at one time the Abyss in the deck as a way to kill Hall of Gemstone because it's in a lot of the green decks, but I decide um, I have taken it out since then. It may make its way back in. I don't know, but it's currently where opposition is. It's currently being tested as opposition. All right, so my opponent's basically out of gas at this point. I uh, disenchant his Hall of Gemstone, take a bunch of damage and go to four, but I'm in the control position and I'm also playing Brea, so the life total is not that relevant. So my turn, I go ahead and Mystical and then use Dak Faden to get the card that I want in my hand. And then I use, I spend as much mana as I can prior to attacking and untapping all my lands. I actually have a Yogmoth's Will running. So I'm going to go ahead and cast Brea, clamp a Thopter. I think I have a Will running. Yeah. I do. So I cast Brea, clamp a Thopter, and then I cast a, um, I eat two artifacts to go up five, and then I um, exile. Casting Toxic Deluge, I, I ate a Grim Monolith and a, and a bird. And then I go ahead and, uh, or maybe two birds, I don't remember. Oh, I, I clamped one of the birds, and then I ate a Grim Monolith and the other one. I clamped one of the birds because I had a tutor in, in, in here somewhere in during this turn. And then I Toxic Deluge for two, which wipes his board. At this point, he has no cards in hand, no board, and a maximum of three mana. And uh, he's complaining about his mana. I have no sympathy for him, but I try to pretend that I do simply to be a good sport uh, and we move on to the next game guy running gemstone nonsense okay so lastly i was facing yet another one of the big three in fact this is all i seem to face uh lately three decks green blue and tessiger who is both green and blue Big green, big blue, and it's mostly the same decks from what I can tell, too. Anyway, I've got a mana heavy draw, which is very, very risky against this Nyssa, but I decide that um, at least I will get mana screwed, so I decide to keep it. When I dress my opponent there, he's got two lands and an Acidic Slime, so he then Acidic Slimes away one of my lands, but he's got a Search for Tomorrow floating, and he gets... um. Nissa down, and he has Draga Tree Speaker that he played on turn one. So he is, and he's been furiously leveling it up. So this is a nasty situation, but I have Seal of Cleansing in my hand, and I top deck Enlightened Tutor. And this is one of the, remember, we need to, against Nissa, you have only so much time before Nissa flips. My opponent um, plays Scavenging Ooze, which I wasn't happy to see, but um, the pressure is starting to get pretty high. But I'm going to make the play that I plan to make anyway. So we Enlighten Tutor. I've got the Seal Cleansing in play. I go ahead and Enlighten Tutor. Play another land. Cast Parallax Tide. Hold Control. One, two, three, four, five. In response, I'll Disenchant with my Seal of Cleansing. My opponent says, that's effed. Although he didn't say it like that. And foom, 
five lands are exiled, which means this is not flipping anytime soon. I just got to deal with the board. Uh, fortunately, I'm playing Brea. So let's go get a land and one, two, three, four. Cast Brea and immediately kill Draga Tree Speaker, which is going to cut him off from four mana. Brea is an elf, so that was that was a huge um, um, dig in, and he top decked Eye of Ujin, so um, that was kind of nice right there. So my turn, I go ahead and I drew Trick Bind, and then I drew Yogmoth's Will. So my opponent starts using Scavenging Ooze, and I really I can't afford to kill it until now, I think. And in response to killing it, he exiles um, a land. So he's taking all the lands out of my deck, so I can't recur them with Crucible. But he left Parallax Tide, so I Yog will play Parallax Tide, and one, two, three, four. Goodbye, four lands. And I'm done for the turn. I'm going to take four damage here. Crazy enough, my opponent plays the land into my Parallax Tide, so I take that too. And then during my upkeep, Trick Bind it. And draw for the turn. And cast. Thanks to, uh, I go ahead and I lose my City of Traders, but I use it to cast Brea a second time. Trading in two Flyers for the Acidic Slime. My opponent's had 10 lands exiled from the game. I'm still not willing to start exchanging 10 life versus 30. Um, Brea damage for Nissa damage doesn't sound good. I'm just going to build up my board for a little while. Finally, I draw a Talisman, which is an artifact, which means I can hit my opponent for four, and then sack Brea and the artifact, uh, killing the Nissa and sitting on... Uh, eight mana in lands in play, so I'm going to replay Brea, and I also have one of my lands as a strip mine. And at this point, my opponent's big green deck is done for. He has had ten lands exiled from the game, and uh, this again, this this deck is just well positioned for uh, the meta game, and uh, Parallax Tide is one of the reasons for that, as of course is Winter Orb, as it has been for a very long time. So. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed watching those games. hope you found it entertaining. Uh, still really on the fence about opposition, or maybe it needs to be the Abyss. As a, the Abyss is another way to kill a um, gemstone, um, provided you can get the black mana to cast it. Um, but opposition and the Abyss both kill Emra Cool, so that is another argument perhaps for the Abyss. The only thing I don't like about it, of course, is that... Um, you know, it kills Dark Confidant. On the other hand, maybe that's a positive. Sometimes we, we get pretty low on life with Dark Confidant. Um, it also works kind of nice with the Gilded Drake. If they have something like uh, Sundering Titan out, you could exchange Gilded Drake for the Titan, and then their Drake would die to the Abyss. Um, so, I mean, there, there's it's it's kind of arguable either way. Opposition clearly has tons of, of value in here. But do we have enough, like, is Brea enough to make Opposition worth playing? I, I don't know. I need more games or thoughts on that one. So whatever your input is, I'd love to hear it. And uh, other than that, um, I, I will potentially be uploading one more for the last couple of series. Also with um, the last version of Control that I played was actually Olaro. It's the same deck. It just doesn't have Pyroblast, Red Blast, Dak Fade, and Duretti. And the commander, of course, is different. But it gives you the ability to run more things that interact with your life total. Um, I tried it out. I liked it fine. But I realized that this format really calls for Pyroblast. And once I kind of puzzled out the way to make them good against green with the Drake and the Tide, I then felt like it was safe to go back to Brea. So that's why I didn't really upload the Aloro games because... I actually think the Brea deck is better in this metagame. So, all right, well, that's all I've got. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.